Hey traders, it's Stephen Brooks, and today we're going to ask the question, do we have underlined half to retest the lows? Now, the reason we're asking this question is because if you're reading any of the news on Yahoo Finance, MSNBC Finance, you're watching your CNBCs or your Bloombergs, if you've done it at all over the last week or so, you would have undoubtedly heard hedge fund managers who have never beaten the returns of the market coming on television talking about how we have to retest the lows. Now, I'll give you full disclosure. We don't have to retest the lows. Nobody's saying we have to. So what I want to do today is I want to put everything into context to be able to determine if we are likely or not likely to go ahead and retest the lows. Because of course, even though those hedge fund managers who again have never beaten the returns of the market say we have to, that's not actually true. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look back over the last decade and I want to talk about all of the market bottoms that we've had over the last decade. Now, of course, you could have you could have did this over the last 100 years, and the results of what we're about to go through, if we went back over a 100-year period, would probably be a little bit different than we see today. But we're just going to use the bottoms from the last 10 years and look and see if we retested those lows. Because again, some of these amazing hedge fund managers who can't seem to ever beat the returns of the market are saying that we have to, which is probably a good idea to go ahead and fade that. But anyway. 2010, flash crash in 2010. Did we retest the lows? No, we did not retest the lows. 2011, summer of 2011, did we retest the lows? Yes, we did. 2012, did we retest those lows? No, we did not. August 2015, did we retest those lows? We did. February 2016, did we retest those lows? Yes, we did. Q4 of 2018, the S&P 500 was down 19.8%. Did we retest the lows? No. So in terms of over the last, the market bottoms that we've seen over the last decades, 50% of the time we retest the lows and 50% of the time we didn't. Okay. Now, no, we definitely don't have to retest the lows. And as I sit here today, without this data, I think it's about 50-50 that we do retest those lows. Of course we could, of course we can't, and of course traders have to be able to be prepared for multiple outcomes in any of these scenarios. What I wanna talk about today is, if we do retest the lows, what is that gonna look like? On average, in these three cases that we did retest the lows over the last decade, on average, it took about four to six weeks. From the first low to that retest of that low. Okay, if that were to happen here, that would mean, again, just assuming we get similar outcomes in this scenario, that would be sometime in May. If that were to be true, and if, this, and if the retest of this low that we may or may not get is in line with the last 10 years, then it would be at some point in May. Now, what has happened to get us to the point that we are today? We've seen historic selling. We've seen every, rec every record broken that you could imagine for historic sell-offs. Everything we've seen now is worse than it was in 1999, it's worse than 1987, it's worse than 1955, and it's worse than the, the, the stock market crash that led, to the great, that led to the Great Depression in 1929. So everything we've seen has been historic and worse than anything we've ever seen before in the market. One of the reasons why was because of deleveraging in the hedge fund space. So as many of us know, in 2019, the S&P 500 was higher by 30.5%. What many of us do not know is the average hedge fund returned 4.89% in 2019. And the idea that the hedge funds over, underperform the overall market, this is, happens every single year to the overwhelming majority of hedge funds and money managers. But if, if I'm a hedge fund and I go into the beginning of 2019 and I see that I didn't come close to getting market returns, well, what do I have to do? I have to leverage up so that I can hopefully get better returns. Again, at the beginning of 2020, the prospects for the stock market and the economy looked really good, okay? The Fed was being very accommodative. Interest rates were not going up. There was more liquidity being thrown into the system. The U.S. signed a trade deal with the U.S. MCA and China. So the prospects of a strong economy and, and, uh, and, and a, a good stock market were there. So what did they do? Hedge funds levered up somewhere between 10 to 20 times to one. So what that meant is, if you only had $10 billion under management, you can trade as if you had somewhere between $100 and $200 billion under management. So in the example that you only have $10 million under management and you leverage up to $100 billion, 
If you lose 10% of that 100 billion, you are completely wiped out with the real assets you have under management. So when these hedge funds levered up big time, they had to do a lot of deleveraging, okay? They had to do a lot of deleveraging in a very short amount of time, and there were three types of hedge funds that had to do this. The first was your short volatility, okay? Your short volatility funds or short volatility. As they had to deleverage, they had to buy back their volatility positions because they were short them. That increased volatility, that increased the VIX. And the folks, the market makers on the other side of that trade, in order to hedge off their positions, they had to sell S&P futures. That added to a lot of negative selling pressure. On top of that, we had long funds, right? You had long funds that are just stock picking hedge funds or whatever ridiculous things they do. And of course, as markets are selling off and they had to deleverage, they had to get out of a lot of their positions, which created a lot more selling pressure as well. On top of that, there was something called a risk parity fund, okay? And a risk parity fund believes that stocks and bonds will very much move inversely of one another. So on a day when stocks are going higher, bonds should, according to these risk parity managers, should go down and vice versa. Unfortunately, we had a lot of days during this crash that we've all been through where both stocks and bonds were down on a given day, as well as gold, as well as basically everything was sell everything you have, move everything to cash. In those scenarios, because these risk parity funds are long stocks and they're long bonds, and if you have a situation where they need to delever in order to get out of those positions, well, that's gonna add to a lot of selling pressure. Now, one of two things has happened for those hedge funds that have to go ahead and that had to deleverage. The first, and we've all kind of heard about these, is they blew up. They did not have the collateral to be able to hold the positions that they had. Those positions became auctioned by the exchanges to other buyers, and they were wiped out. That has happened to a great number of hedge funds. The other hedge funds that had to delever, they got backstopped by the Fed. So in terms of the leverage problems that those funds had, because they were backstopped by the Fed, Leverage is kind of no longer an issue for them. So where we, so what caused a lot of the very big sell-offs, the historic sell-offs? One of the big things that caused it was the deleveraging. Where are we today when it comes to that deleveraging? Well, either the comp, either the hedge fund blew up and they don't have any more money, or they were bailed out by the Fed. So in terms of these hedge funds being overly leveraged, well, that's kind of been fixed. On top of that, algorithms at the front at in the middle of February, when the stock market was at all-time high, they were at 100% long. In a three-week period, they had to go from 100% long to 100% short. And this is long over here, 100% short. So, of course, in a three-week period, algorithms going from 100% long to 100% short, I smudged it right here, that is going to create a lot of massive panic selling in a very, very short amount of time. So these are the two big reasons, in my opinion, we had that 38% sell-off in less than four weeks or whatever it was. But we're trying to talk to here about, okay, do we have to retest the lows? Of course, the answer is a hard no. That is an absurdity to say that we have to retest the lows. But what if we do? What might that look like for where we are today? And today is April 1st, 2020, till we potentially get to those lows. Now, if we've seen over the last 10 years, the lows that have been retested, again, it took about four to six weeks. That would take us out to about May. And if I had to guess, that would be around the May options expiration. Okay, that's the 15th of May. Okay, that is, according to our data, that would probably make a lot of sense if we do retest those lows, that it's gonna end up being right around that time, right around the middle of May. Now, you have to understand, the stock market, financial markets are one big auction. There are buyers and there are sellers. S stocks, prices will go higher until there are new sellers stepping in and saying, hey, we, can know, we think that this is a good price to go ahead and sell. So if we think about the auctions that went on over the last few weeks and the auctions that may, move, may, may, may happen excuse me, moving forward, well, it's a little bit of a different scenario, right? The funds that had to deleverage were a very big, big participant on the selling side of the auction. If are there the same amount of sellers on that side of the auction that have to deleverage now? No. So because of that, 
Will there be less sellers on that side of the auction just because these funds have either deleveraged or have their leverage problems fixed? Well, of course they won't. That's not going, that doesn't mean that we can't retest those lows, but what it will mean is not everyone is going to be selling like crazy at the same time. So the size of the moves are less likely to continue the way they have been. One of the reasons is because the deleveraging has kind of already happened. On top of that, the algorithms, again, think about this. A few weeks ago, they were in the middle of going from 100% long to 100% short. They are already at that 100% short. So do we think those algorithms who are already at 100% short are going to be as active of a participant on the sell side of the auction? Well, the answer is probably no as well. So if we do go ahead and retest those lows, and again, I think it's about 50-50. I have no idea if we will or won't. But if we do retest those lows, the next four to six weeks are probably going to look a lot different than the last four to six weeks. Why? Because the, a lot of the big players on the sell side that were the reasons we had some insanely large moves are no longer active participants on the sell side of the auction because A, they're either no longer there, B, they no longer have a leverage problem because they were bailed out by the Fed, or C, the algorithms, they're already net short. They're already net short. They can't become 150% net short. They're already net short. So if we do go ahead and retest those lows, and maybe it happens sometime in May, maybe it happens before then, or maybe it happens after that, it is unlikely that we're going to see some of the massive, you know, down 5%, down 7%, down 10% days. It's unlikely just because those players that were there during that time are no longer really there on the sell side of that auction. So if we do retest those lows, we're likely to see a little bit of a slower grinder lower to go ahead and retest those lows. Now, of course, new information can present itself at any time. That kind of throws a whole monkey wrench into what we're talking about today. But as I'm shooting this video today on April 1st, 2020, it's a hard no. We do not re need to retest those lows at all. That is a ridiculous thing to go ahead and say. But if we do, in my opinion, it is way less likely that we're going to see some of these giant, giant moves until we get those lows. And if we do get those lows, let's say sometime in May, rather than having a, rather than having a kind of a straight line sell-off, which is what we saw previously, it's probably going to be a much, 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 much slower travel till we get to those lows. And then again, who knows where we go from there. So again, we don't have to retest those lows. It's about 50-50 if we are or aren't. But if we do retest those lows, it's unlikely that the next four to six weeks are going to look anything like the last four to six weeks because the big players that were responsible for some of the very oversized and, and large moves are no longer as active of participants on the sell side of the auction.